the way this will work is my avatar and John's will be in the scene. There is a COVID crisis. We're really shorthanded. We have one nurse, John, and one resident, me. We're able to do anything that you want us to do in terms of procedures or give medicines, give an IV, intubate, extubate, do whatever you want, but you have to tell us what to do. Okay, great. Um, okay, so can we put them on the monitor, please? Sure, let me get the uh, leads are on. So I think I did this right, but I put the white lead on the right. And maybe, um, could the nurse help us? Can we get some information from mom while um, you're putting him on the monitors? Like how old he is, any history, what brought him to the hospital? Mom told me he's like six. Okay. And she, he's been sick for two weeks with cough. Okay, and how, how alert is he for you while you guys are there in with him? Um, I'll try to figure that out. Is he responding to you if you say his name? If you touch him, is he wincing in pain? Ryan, rubbing his sternal rub, he's not waking up. He's not waking up, okay. He's not really doing anything. So I think if he is not doing anything, um, so while we put in the IV, can we get a set of labs and a gas or a critical care panel? Like he's breathing pretty fast, but I don't know if I have a good head position. I feel like his tongue is red. Okay, so we're giving the ketamine now. So we're giving the ketamine one week per kg, and then why don't you try to bag him during this and see if after this he's um, being easier to bag. Yeah, I'm squeezing the bag. And his chest is not moving. You guys see that? Okay. He was breathing really fast, and now it's not moving with my bag at all. Yeah, he okay. stopped breathing. Okay, so why don't you try to suction him and then put your oral airway in and then try to bag with that? Oh, I'm suctioning. Oh, secretions with that ketamine. All right, how do I put this oral airway in? Like, which way does it go? Okay, so you're going to want to turn it so that the. Back like this? Yep, like. Like that? Um, his numbers look a little better. Yep. Okay, so you're going to keep bagging. And then um, how is your bagging? Still easy? Uh, uh, yeah, it's still pretty good. Okay, so I think, are we ready with the rocuronium? Yep. Okay, so we can go ahead and give the rocuronium. And then you can keep time of one minute after the rocuronium dose is given. Oh, our blood pressure dropped. So we want to go ahead and give another uh, fluid bolus of 250. All right, why don't we pause there? Okay. I'm gonna take the headset off. If everybody wants to take their microphones off, we can talk through it. But what were some of the clues, as far as you could tell, that maybe this was more than just respiratory? Or could you have asked more questions to say, huh, why is he so tachycardic? Did you just give him something? Like, is there more to this story than just respiratory, as far as you guys think? Heart failure, respiratory failure? And what kinds of things? Just give me a list. Uh, myocarditis. So it could be myocarditis, sure. We examined him, we could have heard the muffled heart sounds, heart sounds first. Maybe done the um, pericardiosynthesis before, and then we may or may not have had to escalate. Yeah, but sometimes those things are forced by vital sign changes. I guess even with the fluids, there was no change in his heart rate. So maybe that like some sort of cardiac process going on. Yep. Yeah. So giving fluids without decrement in the heart rate, giving fluids in the blood pressure gets worse. So I chose ketamine versus like a propofol because of the hypotension. Because um, I didn't want to drop his blood pressures further. Um, why would propofol for anybody else, why would propofol make you more hypotensive theoretically? It's a direct myocardial depressant. Okay. So it's an anesthetic, there's myocardial depression. What else does it do? And tube size, where did you get that from? So I use the formula for um, tube size. So I did age divided by four plus four. Or, and then I chose, asked for the blade. I mean, the tube size with the other one. Um, you said Miller 2, so I think a Miller 2 would be appropriate, or I would have said grab a Mac 2. Yep. Um, so he's six years old. And I'm bagging him, but nothing's happening. What's behind that? And what do you have to kind of think about? And take me through your decision making there, because you made a couple good decisions. 
So I think um, thinking about like, is something obstructing, um, do you not need, are you not in a good position? So that's why I thought about repositioning to like the sniffing position. I guess in, in, in retrospect, I should have asked for maybe um, a shoulder roll prior to starting, um, but I didn't think of that in the moment. So I thought of repositioning, which is why I asked you to reposition the head. And then I thought of suctioning and then putting in the oral airway to see if that could help with um, the, uh, alleviate some of the obstruction um, and, you know, the positioning. Yep, those were all perfect decisions. Reposition, suction, oral airway as your adjunct in case there's obstruction. And then being certain that you can bag the patient before using uh -huh. a muscular block. So you were pretty clear about not giving it until you were sure that I could bag the patient. Mm -hmm. And then once the breathing tube's in, we have an x-ray come. The x-ray shows you what exactly? 